I just left the movie theater after seeing Ghostbusters Afterlife for the very first time. This film is directed by Jason Reitman, the co-writer of the movie as well, and the son of Ivan Reitman, the director behind the original 84 Ghostbusters. The movie stars Carrie Coon, Fionn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, Paul Rudd, and some interesting surprises, which you may already know of. But just in case you don't, I will keep them a secret because I'm sure some of you guys are trying to stay as spoiler-free as possible. This is the spoiler-free review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, before I go into the review, I want to say that this movie had a couple of things to accomplish. It had to make us forget about 2016 Ghostbusters, that uh, abomination of a film. Terrible, terrible movie from 2016, and it had to reestablish the universe, course correct, give us a bit of a soft reboot, because they're going to make more of these, and also pay respects to the original films. And this movie, this film, is one of the biggest love fests to a previous movie I've ever seen. The movie is a love fest for the original Ghostbusters 1 and 2, but really 1. It's really a love fest for Ghostbusters 1. That's what this movie is. There are so many references and so many callbacks to Ghostbusters 1, both with the music, which some of the themes, like some of the background music, was taken right from the original. You know, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. like those themes are all throughout this movie, all throughout the film. And it's also... Um, not just that, but also paying respects to the original story because there's a lot of characters that we see from the past and jokes. If you are familiar with the original Ghostbusters movie, right, you will pick up on every single reference in this film. And I picked up on, there's so many Easter eggs and references. This is basically, they're going to say it's nostalgia bait, and it is, but this is nostalgia bait, or at least nostalgia, done right. Let me tell you something right now before I go any further. I have not cried harder at a movie in, in, I don't know since when, a decade maybe, maybe more than that. Ghostbusters Afterlife made me weep. I'm literally in the movie theater crying. I'm talking about a grown ass man. Thank God there wasn't anybody around because there was a few people in the theater, but nobody like near me. I was crying like a baby and I never... I don't cry that often at movies. I've been very... I'm, anybody who knows me knows I'm kind of an emotional guy. Like, I'm kind of a sentimental guy. There are choices this movie made that are so powerful for somebody like me. It's going to depend on how much you love the original Ghostbusters. If you love Ghostbusters 84, if that movie, if you grew up with it like I did... I grew up with a Ghostbusters 84. I saw it when I was like four years old. I've seen it maybe once a year for the, my whole life, maybe more than that. I love the actors, love the story, love the comedy, love the characters. I watched the Ghostbusters cartoon show on Saturday mornings on CBS. I had the toys. I had the Ghostbusters firehouse toy, bro. I had Ecto-2, for, I know it was Ecto-1A from Ghostbusters 2. I... Rented Ghostbusters 1 and 2 multiple times, told my parents to do it when I was a kid. I love Ghostbusters so much. I love this franchise. I love what Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd created here. And if you are one of those people, don't be surprised if you shed a tear. This movie is not only a love letter to Ghostbusters 84, but also a love letter and tribute to Harold Ramis. And it was so touching and so heartfelt. Like, I'm getting emotional right now. What they did with the Egon character, the movie's about his grandchildren. You know, much like Force Awakens and a lot of these like soft reboots, it's about his grandchildren. And they discover some deep, dark secrets that he was hiding from people and some deep, dark secrets about the town they live in that he was involved in i'm not going to go into too many spoilers or too many i don't want to go into it but it all is going to come down to how much you love that original movie i as i'm watching this film i'm actually getting really upset because they i'm upset in the sense not at the movie but because i really wanted them to do another ghostbusters like the real ghost this is ghostbusters 3 this movie I wanted him to do Ghostbusters 3 when Harold Ramis is still alive. We lost him. He passed away. And it's sad. But 
And, and it sucks because I really wanted to see the four together again one last time in a movie. This is the closest you're going to get to that now. This is the closest you're going to get to it, is this film. They, Jason Reitman made all the right choices, in my opinion. He did things I wasn't even expecting. It was so touching. Yes, there are. it's very derivative. A lot of this goes back to the first movie. Um, some of the... How can I put this? Some of the antagonistic forces in the film, you know what I'm saying, go back to the first film. The movie is missing one character, which I'm not going to say who it is, besides Harold Ramis, of course. Actually, two characters, because unfortunately, Lewis Tully is not in this movie. I was really hoping to see Rick Moranis again. He's the one actor who did not come back. Um, but everybody else, I mean, Paul Rudd uh, plays Dr. Gruberson. He's the teacher during summer school of Egon's grandchildren. And, um, you know, the Spangler family's been kind of torn apart. And this movie acts as connective tissue to Egon and, and what he left behind and the legacy that not only Egon but Harold Ramis left behind. This movie felt like a Ghostbusters film. There was some things about the film I thought were, it's not perfect, okay? It's not as funny as the first two. Bill Murray is not all over this film like in the first couple movies. Um, it's witty, but it's not as witty as... It's got more of that modern Marvel kind of humor to it. So if you like that kind of humor, you'll probably like the movie. Me, personally, I like that humor sometimes. Uh, when it comes to this film, I feel like it, it, it wasn't that funny. The film, to me, was not that funny. So if you're looking to just have a bunch of laughs... There are some laughs, don't get me wrong, but... It, it, it wasn't funny to me. To me, it was emotional. This movie was emotional. And the lore. I love the Ghostbusters lore. I love Tobin's spirit guide. I love all that stuff about how they found this stuff out. This movie has a ton of of lore added to it. Lore from the previous films has been expanded upon. There's there's a lot of stuff that they did here that I thought was just phenomenal stuff. There's some stuff that of course is going to be a little bit unrealistic. You know, for example, there's a an RC Pro Am scooter that happens to be faster than a car. I mean again, you know, people in this movie are geniuses. Uh, so you know how it is, but there's little things like that that you could say are kind of silly, but it, it didn't matter because the emotion and the powerful moments and the love for the first movie, and again, I'm really emotional. Maybe it, I won't feel different when I see it again, but I don't think I will because this is the movie that I've wanted to see. This is what I've wanted. I've wanted a movie like this for a long time, and they gave it to us, and there's just so much to love about this film. The characters, you know, like I said, so there are some questions I have about the plot, which I'll get into in the spoiler review. There's just so much to love about Ghostbusters Afterlife. And again, it all depends on how much of a fan you are of the originals. If you are not a fan of the originals, you're, you're probably not going to like the movie that much. You might enjoy a little bit of it, but it's going to be a one and done. But if you love Ghost, if you grew up with Ghostbusters, this movie will satisfy you. In many ways. It's going to satisfy you in many ways. Like I said, I cried like a baby. I mean, I, it just, it was beautiful. This was a beautiful story. Uh, it is a family story. And there's a sense of discovery in the movie. Once again, it's not perfect. The comedy didn't hit for me at all on all cylinders. And there's some interesting things that they did. But overall... If you like the original, you will like this movie most likely. It's so much better than Ghostbusters 2016. That movie was just a complete train wreck. This was... This is exactly what they should have done with that movie. It really was. By the way, there's a mid and post credit scene that I thought were both really powerful. And it puts a smile on my face because... Dude, you don't understand. I have a lot of... I love Ghostbusters so much. Like it reminds me of my parents who are no longer with us. Like I, you know, I, I, it's just such a movie that was such an in integral part of my entire life. Like every girl I've dated, I've shown Ghostbusters to. Like you know, it's it's fuck, man. Like this, this hit me, man, on several levels. So go see the movie. If you like Ghostbusters, if you love Ghostbusters, go see it as soon as possible. Trust me on this one. I will talk to you later on. And I'll do a spoiler review in a 
in the next coming in, in the coming days.